good to see you all. Yeah, it's funny because I wasn't going to be sat in the chair today. I only found out at 3 p.m. yesterday. Um, <laughs> um, Anna was going to do the show, but she's so busy right now that she actually can't commit to doing divine intervention. So um, it was felt that she wouldn't do that. And so yesterday we, I was like, wow, I'm not prepared to do a show. It's kind of 3 p.m. It's feeling a little late and I like to really put my heart into this and to give everything to, to the show, to, to the healing. Um, but something inside of me was saying, yeah, yeah, this is, this is, this is for you. Um, so more prayer with everybody and it was felt that um, I would go ahead and do the show. And so, yeah, I just felt that like energy coming through, like, yeah, this is, this is, this is the right direction. And, and I love that when that happens, when you know that um, you're in alignment and just being stretched. And I think that's what I was talking about last week is like stepping into the magnitude. And that was like, was coming through my head was like, are you going to say that you can't do it because you're not prepared, but yet you want to step into your magnitude? And it's not really about the doing, but it's about the mind stepping in the, that direction and saying yes to that, saying yes to the greater plan. And so that's what was, that was, that was what was felt. And yeah, I feel very, very grateful to be here and grateful for Jeffrey and um, Frank for their show and his emotion. It's very, very beautiful. And so as always, we want the, the maximal healing from our joinings together. There's, there's no other reason why, why I would do this while you're here. And so I want us to join really deeply in that prayer, whatever the prayer of your heart is, is to go into that. And let's just really open our minds up to whatever needs to happen in your mind to remember who you are. And I'd like to, um, I'd like to begin by sharing something with you. Um, I've got a story and it will lead into what I'm going to begin to talk about. Really, the show is going to be about forgiveness. And um, I was on a trip. I was coming from England and I was going to Mexico. And uh, my dad said, I'll drop you to the airport. Yeah, OK, great. And on the way there, it's like the traffic is like really busy, busier than normal. And it's a normal route that, that I kind of know that we both knew. And so the traffic was really, really busy and not in the normal hot spots where you find problems. So it's like, hmm, what's going on in my mind here? <laughs> Is there some resistance going on? And I could feel my dad was feeling responsibility of like getting me to the airport on time. And I was sitting there doing my lesson. And at the time it was I rest in God. And I was just sitting there, okay, I just rest in God. And I was fluctuating between God, I've got to get to the airport and just, okay, let all things be exactly as they are. There's no point in getting stressed. What will be, will be. And I could feel that he, he was, my dad was under this pressure of trying to get me there. And I just said, listen, dad, it doesn't matter whether I get to the airport or whether I don't get to the airport. Let's just, let's just relax. And of course he was kind of like, what are you mad? You've booked to go to Mexico and now you're saying, look, it doesn't matter. But yeah, it was just relaxing into what, into that moment. Like, no, I can't push the river. I can't change this. I can change my mind, but I can't, I can't push the river of form. And so I was just sitting there praying, I rest in God. And I found peace through that. And I was just sitting there being peaceful and slowly everything unfolded to get me on the plane. And so I was like, okay, great. We're going through all the customs and everything. Really good, feeling good. And I'm listening to the course. I like to do that when I'm in the airport to get my mind really focused, ready for the trip. So I'm listening to the course. And finally, it's like that point when you get and you find your seat, you're like, oh, good. I've, I've arrived at this point. Now I, can, now I can sit down and relax. There's probably going to be no more questions asked of me or whatever. So um, don't need to be as alert, but I can just enjoy my moment. So I sit in my chair. And I continue on with the course and I've got my eyes shut and I'm meditating, feel really good, like, oh, this is really peaceful. Lady comes up and uh, she sat next to me. 
So we have a little smile at one another. She sits down, okay, great, good. Put my seatbelt on, ready to go. And then um, it was a Spanish speaking airline, Aero Mexico, I think. There's a little plug for you. And uh, <laughs> cheap flight next time. <laughs> and, um, and all of a sudden there was this announcement across the, um, from, the, from the pilot or whoever, and all of a sudden the plane's like gone into this panic, but it was in Spanish. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I just kind of felt it came out of my meditation and the woman's next to me is a bit shaken. I said, oh, what, 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 what's going on? And she could speak Spanish and English, thank God. And she said, the pilots just said, a man has come onto the plane <clears throat> and he's dropped off some bags onto the plane and he's left the plane and it could be a bomb. And so everyone's like, oh my God, do not take any of your stuff with you. You need to leave the plane immediately. And of course, everyone's like grabbing their stuff and everything. It's kind of funny, like how we feel and not our material possessions. Like, oh God, I've got to have my, my perfume. I can't not, not deal with that. I've got to have my bag with my phone and everything in it. I can't just leave all this stuff on there. So everyone's trying to get their stuff out. So it's like, it's going to be quite hard just for me to get out. But in actual fact, I wasn't really, I thought, wow, this is kind of cool because I'm not feeling so stressed out at, the, at, the, at this point. I thought maybe in my life, if I heard there's a bomb, um, I might be a little bit more stressed, but I wasn't. Um, but I had the Course in Miracles in front of me and I was like, wow, you know, I really need help with this Jesus because this is, this is, this is pretty deep. And so I put my hand on the book and I just said, wow, may, maybe this is, maybe my time's up in this moment. Who's, who's to say what's going on? Wow, it seems pretty open at this point. So I put my hand in the book and I said, just show me a sign of whatever's going on. And I undo the book and it turns to, there is nothing to fear. And my whole body just completely relaxed and then it literally in that moment, it went bing bong, you know, like they do with the thing. It goes, oh, we've just found out who it was. The guy had dropped his bags off. His wife was in a wheelchair. And now we've just wheeled her back down. We're all going back to Mexico. And it's like, oh, and everyone's all like happy again. And it was like, wow, that lesson really, really saved me um, in that moment. And I think that's actually a, a really beautiful thing to remember in any type of stressful situation, particularly with world affairs going on, uh, walls going to be built, um, wars, um, terrorism, bombs, all of these things that, that we believe that are outside of us, that we are generating, you're generating it in your own mind. The terrorist is in my mind in that moment of bombs and God knows what else. And so the only thing I can really do is forgive and so everything can be used. These news reports that we get coming through of all these seeming terrible things that are going on in the world that can really affect us. And, and we, can, we can then project onto the person. We can project onto Donald Trump or whoever, the British government for letting us all down. But really there's gonna be no healing in that as, as we well know. And so this is, this today that's been given to us is this very beautiful lesson. There is nothing to fear. And we have to really be serious about looking into our minds about what we believe about these things. Seeing it as if you see it outside, then there's not much we can really do. We are in a lot of denial and it can be very hard to, to keep taking it back. And so that's why I'm here to continuously remember to take it back to my mind, to remember, no, if that's what's coming in, then it's for me to look at. If it's not affecting me, then great. Like, there's no need to, to worry about it. But if there's some sort of fear coming up, anxiety, some sort of emotion that feels uncomfortable, um, I really need to look at what I believe in my mind. So I felt like that was a really beautiful demonstration as well as how we're truly looked after in our chosen path of A Course in Miracles, that he's always there. And in that situation, I needed a very strong symbol. 
And I don't think he could have given me a really better um, lesson in that moment. There is nothing to fear. So, yeah, I really want us to kind of take our time with that today and this lesson to not take it lightheartedly. There is nothing to fear. There's, he's not mucking around. There's no room for movement. In truth, there is nothing to fear. So this is really an opportunity to actually get, get in touch with that. That's what the offering is um, for today. And I know on Jeffrey's show, he actually, he actually read, read some of it. But I felt, um, even though I heard that, I thought it's still important that we actually cement this in our minds, that this is the truth about who we are. So I'd like to, I'd like to read this. So however you want to take this in and open your mind up to the reality of who you are, then this is, this is the moment. There is nothing to fear. The idea for today simply states a fact. It is not a fact to those who believe in illusions, but illusions are not facts. In truth, there is nothing to fear. It is very easy to recognize this, but it is very difficult to recognize it for those who want illusions to be true. Today, practice periods will be very short, very simple, and very frequent. Merely repeat the idea as often as possible. There is nothing to fear. You can use it with your eyes open at any time and in any situation. It is strongly recommended, however, that you take a minute or so whenever possible to close your eyes and repeat the idea slowly to yourself several times. There is nothing to fear. It is particularly important that you use the idea immediately should anything disturb your peace of mind. The presence of fear is sure sign that you are trusting in your own strength. The awareness that it, there is nothing to fear shows that somewhere in your mind, though not necessarily in a place you recognize as yet, you have remembered God and let his strength take the place of your weakness. The instant you are willing to do this, there is indeed nothing to fear. Yeah, that's just, wow. Yeah, I just feel so fired up when we have something like this, so direct, so simple. That when we get caught up in all of our thinking about this self-identity, that's really the core issue. That's what we're protecting, protecting the false identity, protecting the illusion, wanting to live in this world in, in a good way and wanting the things of the world. That's, that's the trap, that's, that's the fear. And we're being offered something much, much greater than that. And so that's always the remembrance that we want to come back to, that there's much more on offer. And it's actually when we um, rely on our own strength, when we believe that we've done something wrong, that we must correct, that we then end up using the ego's thought system to try and get ourselves out of the hole. And, and we know that, that that doesn't work we become trapped because through that game there's more the ego's got more and more games to to play with us to keep us stuck in it that's why it enjoys analysis because it's just got so many ideas and so really that's that's the purpose of forgiveness is to hand this over 
and yeah, I wanted to clear something up from last week. I, I watched the show actually, and um, I said like, yeah, really, it's just we don't, we don't really need forgiveness because everything is forgiven. And in truth, yeah, that, that is true. We don't actually need it. But because we believe that we ha are here, then we do need it. If you believe you're a body, a person in time and space, then you definitely um, need forgiveness. But it's not really of God. There's no forgiveness in heaven. There's no forgiveness in truth. <clears throat> but yet it's a wonderful tool that we have so we can hand over all of these thoughts. Yeah, and I think we can get... Um, we can make it overcomplicated, and that's something I wanted to talk about today. Um, it's like I was talking to a friend, and it's like, oh, do I have to do an instrument for peace, and I have to really get underneath everything? And it's like, yeah, that's that's part that's part of it. That's definitely if something's really really looping in your mind, then yeah, we need to get underneath what's what's happening. Um, we've come with a certain curriculum that is individual to us, our forgiveness program. So we actually really need to look at those patterns. And so that's why we have the lessons of A Course in Miracles. That's why we have different teachings, um, David's YouTubes, and we have Spiri to really look at those beliefs. But equally, it doesn't have to be <coughs> that hard. <coughs> we can just simply really, really focus in on what we're believing in that moment and we can change our minds as quick as that. It's, it's, not, it's not always a process that we have to somehow sit down in a chair or wherever. You can be doing it all of the time. Um, and so that's really something that I do is if something is coming up, like the, the first step is just to really look at what I'm believing in my mind and just to really like focus on it and feel the feelings and just simply hand it over. <clears throat> and, if it's, and if it's not moving in that moment, I'm not starting to feel something lifting and joyful, then yeah, there's um, more work to be done. Um, but I also wanted to, um, in a way, pay my respects to, to forgiveness because knowing the power of what this process actually is and so if we're going through our day and we're forgetting our forgiveness, particularly when these grievances are coming up, then we're missing out on some really wonderful opportunities. And it's not to um, make ourselves guilty. We just have to be really, really honest um, in what our focus is throughout the day. And it's like often we're focused on changing the form, making the form better. You could see that in a job. Oh, I'd really like a new job. I'd like to do something different, but you only have one job. Your job is already set. The only thing that you need to do is forgive. That is your only job from now on. So it's to really take that on wholeheartedly. And I think that's what um, I'm saying to myself in this moment, that I really want to take on this mission of letting go of everything that I think I am, uncovering everything that needs to be forgiven and remembering the joy. And another part of that is actually remembering why we're doing this, remembering what, what, is, what is on offer, the peace, the joy that is our natural inheritance that we haven't believed to be true in our lives before we entered onto this Course in Miracles or whatever, it doesn't really matter, just when you want your mind to open up, your mind will open up no matter what you want to do. It's inevitable. It's, it's, um, we're only simply remembering. So in that remembering, everything will be completely revealed. And so that's why, that's why forgiveness is very, very important. And so we don't want to be, we don't want to be missing steps. We don't, we don't want to be, um, thinking that we're somewhere that we're not. 
we have to be very, very honest with what's triggering us. That's why the mind training is so important when Jesus says an untrained mind can accomplish nothing. So, um, yeah, I wanted to actually share a, a, a forgiveness story. Hopefully that will be a, uh, an inspiration. Um, and it's a very dear one to my heart because I, I haven't been very forgiving in my life. Uh, I, I didn't believe in forgiveness for a long, long time. If someone upset me, that was it. You've upset me and that's the end of it. We're done. And um, I had that with my nan, actually. I absolutely hated her guts. I felt like she'd upset everyone in my family and um, we were done. And I made that very clear. I didn't feel to people, please. I was upset. <laughs> I blamed her. And um, yeah, it was a very difficult relationship. I just um, ignored her, uh, dismissed her and cut her out of my life. And I actually, it was through, it was through a, a, um, a silent retreat actually. I was on a silent retreat and um, the guy who was taking the silent retreat said, if there's someone who's dying, um, it would be really good to like meditate and give them like this time because it can be really, really healing for them. And I was, all of a sudden, my nan was actually dying of cancer at that time. And she popped up in my mind and I was like, no, I'm not go I haven't come here to focus on her. I've come here to focus on me. And he was like, and as he was sort of like talking, I said, this is like very forgiving. It's a very forgiving process and a letting go process. And I'm thinking, hmm, he seems to be talking to me here. So, um, I thought, you know what, if anybody actually needs this, then, then it's her rather than, rather than me. And if what's being said is, is true, then fine, I will, I, will, I will give this to her. So something inside of me was, 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 was wanting that really. And so we got down to the final day and we'd done, we done this final meditation. He said, oh, that person you're thinking about, you know, maybe they're dying, whatever than to think about them. So, okay, great. So I thought, okay, yeah, I'm gonna absolutely hand this over um, to her as a gift. And it was like the universe was like, yes. I mean, I wasn't completely in the yes, I've gotta be honest, but there was definitely enough willingness to somehow, okay, let's let go of this. And did this meditation, nothing special, nothing really special happened in it. Um, didn't feel particularly deep or anything like that. And um, right at the end of the, the session, and we just like came out of it. And as I came out of it, there was a Buddha, Buddhist statue in the corner of the room. And I was just looking at it. And as I was looking at it, the whole thing just went whack, just expanded, and then just came back in to itself. And I was like, whoa, what the hell was that? And I just instantly felt this like complete and utter forgiveness. Like I just saw her in a different light. It was like, oh my God, thank you so much for all of those difficult times. Um, you were a true teacher to me. You were showing me true forgiveness. You were showing me actual true love. You were showing me, don't look at these relationships. Look for something much, much more. And uh, so she really, really gave me this gift. And I completely and utterly, like, I, I feel there's so much like love for her. And um, I came back from the Buddhist retreat and I decided to go and see my family. And I was like, I'm gonna go and see Nan. I've completely and utterly forgiven her. I feel so grateful for everything. And they're looking at me like I'm absolutely, completely mad because they knew all the things I would say about her. <laughs> and I phoned her up. And she said, yeah, yeah, come around and see me. She was still at home at the time. <laughs> and I go around her house. She could just get up. She, she answers the door. She's like beaming. She has a beautiful smile on her face. She's like really grateful to see me. And we sit down in the chair. And the first thing she says to me, she says, well, I haven't got anything for you. You know that. <laughs> and I was like, man, I haven't come for anything. And she just sat there and she just wanted to tell me stories of her life. And I was just sitting there listening to her and just feeling this absolute gratefulness. And so this was the first like, wow, I can completely and utterly forgive. Like 
it was it was so so wonderful like the least person I'd ever think that I could ever ever forgive and I can just feel that in my heart now I never thought that would be possible but I just feel so so grateful for her and everything that she gave me she was a true teacher she did not compromise she said what she had to say <laughs> she did what she wanted when she wanted and it was like she was no no holds barred <laughs> but yeah she she really gave you some wonderful forgiveness programs which of course a lot of people pleasing in families and whatever and of course seemingly she brought a lot of upset but when I could really see it it was like wow she was at the center bringing up everybody's unconscious thoughts to the fore to um, help you really look at them <clears throat> and when I could see that I was like wow you are just the ultimate teacher I am so grateful and it's like now I have this like beautiful th feeling in my heart with her so thank you so much man that was pff, wow unbelievable and so I just really felt to share that with you because to be honest that was probably the hardest person in my life that I would ever forgive I don't feel that towards anybody anymore um, and so I wanted to really really show the power of what this is showing us and like so if there's something uh, that's really disturbing you that's really upset you in your life that this is what this is all about to really let that go and you are going to reap the, re the rewards of that and so hopefully in my words is encouragement and it's also encouragement to me to continue on to remember what forgiveness is all about. And so on the flip side of that, yeah, I wanted to just um, in these last few minutes um, remember um, why we're doing this. And it's um, one of my favourite lessons, actually. <laughs> forgiveness offers everything I want. Someone said to me once, this is Jesus' sales pitch. <laughs> And so this is what's going to be on offer to you always, forever and today in this very moment here and now. We're not talking about forgiving in the future. We're trusting in this very moment to let go of everything that we think we are. What could you want forgiveness cannot give? Do you want peace? Forgiveness offers it. Do you want happiness, a quiet mind, a certainty of purpose and a sense of worth and beauty that transcends the world? Do you want care and safety and the warmth of sure protection always? Do you want a quietness that cannot be disturbed, a gentleness that never can be hurt? a deep abiding comfort and a rest so perfect it can never be upset. All of this forgiveness offers you and more. It sparkles on your eyes as you awake and gives you joy with which to meet the day. It soothes your forehead while you sleep and rests upon your eyelids so you see no dreams of fear and evil, malice and attack. And when you wake again, it offers you another day of happiness and peace. All this forgiveness offers and more. I'm in. <laughs> so, well, we've come to time again. <laughs> that flew around. Much blessings, much love. Stay forgiving. Open your minds up. Open-mindedness. Thank you so much for joining me. Peace be with you.